Stay, stay, stay. Are we gonna work today? Oh, oh, there it is. Hi, guys. Let me just fix this if I can. Put oh, on it. Okay. Good morning, guys. Here, let me just flip this out of the way so you guys can see me. Guess what we're gonna do today? I'm getting no watchers because it's too early, which is okay. That's okay with me. Where's my plug? There we go. Okay. Today, since it was, it seems to be the most requested video, um, on that, uh, the thank you video, I thought we would get into doing the foaming, uh, my body buff. It's the foaming, like a whipped soap, sugar... Well, sugar slash salt scrub. I'm doing a salt scrub because that's what I like to do is the salt scrub version. Um, it's not a really hard one to do. You guys can change it up any way that you like. You can do it with sugars. I don't like to do it with sugars too much because I find the sugar, the amount of sugar that you have to add to it, it actually starts melting the, the you know, the bottom of it. So, um, and don't mind my old beast here. This is... My grandmother's, I am in love with this thing. It's 55 plus years now, so it's done me well. The only thing that I wish I really had was since it came with this nice porcelain or whatever the glass is from back then, I've really been looking for a stainless, um, you know, a stainless bowl to go for it. Anyways, with this recipe, um, I suggest making the your own foaming bath whip bottom so this is the homemade version of foaming bath whip i like this version better because it's got very very few ingredients in it um as opposed to the ones that you can buy that are pre-done you can use the pre-done ones i have absolutely no problem with the pre-done ones whatsoever but for now, I can't show you how to make this because it's a paid recipe. If anybody is interested in actually purchasing the foaming bath whip or foaming bath butter, whatever, you know, it depends. Um, you can purchase it from either DIY um, on Etsy or you can actually go to Zen and they have all the ebooks and stuff there. Sharon has some amazing, amazing recipes. This is her recipe, and I absolutely love it. But like I said, you can do both. So the reason I'm doing this today, besides the fact that, um, you know, it was requested, I have to do an order. So, morning, guys. Good morning, Shauna. So, anyways, like I said with this, with this recipe too, um... There's different oils you can use. I suggest to stick with the lighter oils, but you can change it up. Originally, what I used to add is jojoba oil and fractionated coconut. I don't seem to know where my jojoba oil is, which is okay. So I'm going to use argon. And like I said, it depends on how expensive you want this to be. I'm going to be using my really good oils. So I have argon. I don't buy a lot of this. I only use it for special, usually face serums. Um, my healing bombs or whatever, or for mature skin type things. So, it's going to go into this, and like I said, I have fractionated coconut, which most people have. You can use that. I'm thinking I'm going to actually change that up today with either avocado. I'll probably stick with the apricot kernel. That's probably my thing. So, anyways, my bowl has already been, um, alcoholed. So... This little puppy in there. Lock her down. There we go. Okay. This bowl is so, like, scratched up. Okay, and anybody who hasn't dealt with foaming bath whip before, uh, well, you know with the homemade, st or the store-bought stuff, it, uh, 
well, all of it, it doubles, triples in the size. So this may not look like a very lot. Uh, trust me, when I get going, it will double in size. You'll notice, too, that the homemade whip is a lot more uh, fluffy than the um, store-bought. So, store-bought is almost seriously like a butter or a mountain pour. It's a lot um, thicker. Harder, if you would say. So, um, I've heard people melting it a slight bit, but from... My understanding is you're not supposed to do that because it can affect the preservative that's in it. And yes, there is a preservative in here. There has to be. This actually gets cooked. Like it's a base that you would actually cook and you do it on the stove. Like, it doesn't take a long time. It's not like it's a hard, a super hard thing to do. That's not what I'm saying. It's just... I like it better. There's less ingredients. I know exactly what's in it. So... And so for this, I start whipping it first. I'm going to get my oils and stuff ready, though, right now. Uh, some of them, anyway. Part of it. And I guess I need to plug it in. That would be a good thing to do, would be to plug it in. Alright. So. Come on, big boy. Plugged in. And because I just touched that. I should have gloves. I will probably have gloves. Oh, we got a whole conversation going on this morning. What's the difference between coconut oil and fractionated coconut oil? Oh, okay. Uh, fractionated coconut is always liquid. Never goes to solid state like the coconut oil that we use for soaping. Um, they have solid coconut 76 or 96. And all that number means is the temperature at which it melts at. So it's usually solid. Um, you know... Like, it'll start to melt at room temperature, whereas fractionated is already liquid. And they do another process. Don't ask me the chemical process right now, because I don't remember. So, actually, I guess I should get some other stuff ready for this. For this one, I'm going to do Manoli Tahiti, because that's... She wanted floral and nice, so... And I'm thinking pink, because we're doing the pink Himalayan salt, so... Where is my pink mica? You can pretty much color this, by the way, with anything. I'm going to use micas today. Um, if you wanted, like, if you were going to use a lake, think about it. It's rubbing it on your body. You don't want to be rubbing color on your body. So I do normally stick pretty much with the micas with this stuff. So I just have to find my pink mica, guys. No, I don't want... Oh, here it is. Pink Vibrance from Nurtures. Gotta love it. So... In case you guys know that my Mondo, remember my Mondo mold? This big boy that's the pill shaped? In case anybody's looking for these, these are actually what they call shaving bowls for the, you know, the brushes and the puck soaps. You put your shaving soap in there and you, that's basically what these are if anybody's looking for them. So, and I, I should be measuring for you guys right now. I don't always measure, just so you know. Um, only because I've done it so often. Like, as far as adding the oil to this mix, I just kind of go by how it feels, if that makes sense. So, I'm going to put in a bit of my... I'm not... I'm putting this in my bowl. I know you guys can't see me. Yeah, you probably still can't see me. Anyways, I'm putting mica in my bowl. And... See, it's not a lot. Into my little metal bowl. I'm going to put my, and by the way, salt. The salts that I use for this. Dendric salt. In case anybody's, well, that's pink Himalayan. We don't want that just yet. I'm using dendric salt, okay? I love this stuff. It helps with the scent. Very, very, very fine, fine grain. It's like sugar, okay? So I have dender, dendritic salt. It helps with the fragrance among, and also it's a, a milder exfoliant. So I'm going to put about two tablespoons. You know what? I'm going to get my metal tablespoons. I hope I know where they are. <laughs> oh, Tammy, so prepared. Where are they? No. This can't be happening. I know I saw them. But where? Where did I see them? Oh, guys. 
I had them yesterday, damn it. <laughs> oh, I know where they are. I'll be okay. I think they're with all my, um... Yes, they are. They're down here. <sighs> That's what I wanted. They should be where I need them. Go figure. Okay. No, no whistles. Okay, so... I'm taking the Dendrix salt. I wish you guys could see me. This big beast of a machine is, like, way in the way. So, anyways, if I could show you, it's even finer. It's finer than citric. It's finer than sand. Like, it's such a tiny... I'll see if I can do it. Anyways, I've got... There's one heaping tablespoon. There's two heaping tablespoons. And if I can show you the texture, maybe I can. Can you guys see that? It's so... See? It's finer than sugar. And this stuff is great, by the way, when you do, um, you know, uh, if you do bath salts or anything kind of like that. Okay, now, so for oil, I actually put my fragrance and my oils in here with the mica. And I would say start off with two tablespoons. Okay. So... Yeah, I'm going to do two tablespoons of argon. There's one. And there's two. And there is a recommended amount of how much oil that you can add to foaming bath whip. I would suggest you look up what that is, because off the hand right now I can't tell you because I just can't tell you. <laughs> I don't have it in front of me. Okay, now apricot kernel oil. I'm only going to add one tablespoon right now. Um... I'm adding this to that little stainless bowl again, by the way. Not, um, not to this big bowl, obviously. And I'm sorry you guys can't see. And it's gonna get loud. I will apologize for that now. Where's my fork? Oh, uh, let's just use my glass stirrer. So anyways, in here, I have my mica, my oil, and my dendric salt, okay? And the salt gets thick. So I will have to add, it's almost like a, if you guys can see that, it's almost like a paste. So I will probably have to, I know I'm going to have to add more oil, but I'm just mixing it up right now. And it makes the mica easier to mix, okay, or to add to the base. Yeah, I'm going to add, no, I'm not going to add oil to that yet. I will probably have to add another oil, another oh, tablespoon of oil to this. Um, actually, what I'll do is I'll add the oil right to this. Oh, I forgot the fragrance. That's why it's loose. I'll be okay. Hang on. <laughs> Tammy, 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 Tammy. See what happens? I got a people going on here, and I'm freaking... It's hard to keep track. Okay, that's three mils. Well, not quite. That's almost six mils, and I'm going to go another half okay six and a half mils and you're thinking wow that's a lot when you see how much this doubles it's not a lot okay so I just got two. Oh, oh it's not so good already just let me mix up my little mica dude here you guys are gonna go wow that was easy okay and while I'm at it so that I Save some time. I'm going to open up. I'm going to be using sea salt as well. Fine sea salt. Fine because I pipe it into the container. And uh, it's just easier. So I have my little bowl. I can't say as I, how much I'm putting in here if I'm going to use it all. I'll just know as I'm dumping if it's enough or not, okay? So, I know you guys are going to ask, like, oh my god, how much did you just do? I can't tell you yet. <laughs> Cannot tell you yet. Because right now, oh, if I can even open the dang thing. They do pack up really well, I'll tell you. Oh, i got to cut it more. Um... Come on, big boy. Yeah, this is fine. I'm just pouring this in its own little bowl. Just for easier maneuverability after.
Okay. And that's like probably a half a cup. It's not in here yet. So, like I said, depending on what I add in here, I'll know once I start whipping. Okay. In you go, big guy. Come on, get in there. Oh, I opened the bottom. Now I'll explain why I had a hard time opening it. Okay, here goes nothing. And, um, I'm sorry it's going to get loud for a sec, okay? So, I'm going to use this one first. I'm going to get it off the side of the bowl. Alright, here goes nothing. This thing is loud because it's old. Oh, you're not too bad today. the stuff off the side, which I shouldn't do this while it's running. I think I'm going to have to use the hand mixer, guys, because I could smell engine. <laughs> no, I just, I like to, I like to use the whipper. I was going to use this, but I think it's going to be easier with the hand mixer today. So, hang on. On that note, let's get this puppy off. Oh, I hate taking this thing off. Ugh, okay. Just let me get this all off, cause waste not, what not. I mean, it's not a very hard thing to do. If you guys are making the base from scratch, you basically make it, but then you let it sit for 24 hours before you go and um, turn it into this, or to anything that you're making it into, like... It's awesome, you can make shaving soap. You can virtually make anything with this base. I love it. You can put ho-ho beads in here, you don't have to use salt. You could use um, uh, poppy seeds, anything that's lightly exfoliating. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, just for the sake of you guys being able to see and whatnot, I guess that's all I'm gonna be able to get off of there. I feel like I should be taking it all off, but... Alright. We're gonna take this puppy off. Give me two seconds. I know you guys can't see. And I can't handle it. Alright. Come here, big boy. You're not retired yet, but you're not helping me either. Oh, ow, jeez, Lord, the thing weighs about 500 pounds. Okay. <laughs> it's heavy. All right, so this will be better anyways, I think. Oh, this is getting really thick. Okay, so this is, I don't know if you guys can see that. That's my mica oil fragrance. Stay. I'm going to get my hand mixer. See, right now, it doesn't look like a lot, right? Okay, so we're going to get the old hand mixer out. And I think from what I remember last time is this thing only has a high. <laughs> so it should be rather fun. And on that note, too, I'm also going to add it tiny bit of oil on its own and you'll see what I mean if you guys get bored just yell at me or put some tunes on or something <laughs> I don't know okay so put a little well in there get off okay I'm going to take a bit of my apricot oil. Okay. 
Remember, I've already got a tablespoon in the other one. So this one's going in here. And here we go. She's already growing, so I'm gonna start adding my uh, my stuff. With this stuff, guys, if you do, it flops. Okay, just a second. So, right now we have a nice pink fluffy, but I need more because I have to add the rest of this plus my salt in there. So, in this goes. This is part of your, your abrasive stuff now. Where's my spatula? Okay, get it off the sides. It's already getting a nice, um, a really nice whippy texture. So, like very, very whippy nice. So I'm going to beat it up some more, and then we're going to put some more salt in it. And that's definitely enough for oil, because I don't want it to get liquidy on me. So... Start putting in a little bit of salt. Nice and big and fluffy. I just got to add a tiny bit of pink salt in here, guys. Just a tiny bit and make sure that I have the small grain. That's not it. This is it. I don't use a lot and it's not, um, I don't know if it's fine. Yeah, I guess it's pretty small grain. Um, shoot, I don't have, what can I use? I guess we'll just use my other spoon. So this is the, uh, I don't know if you guys can see the size of the grain. It's not very big. And I just put a little bit in, so that's one, two, and we'll go, okay, so that's roughly three tablespoons.
first day. That's what it looks like. So we got a really nice light, like Cool Whip. Very, very Cool Whippy stuff, okay? Didn't overbeat it so it didn't flop. And that's basically it. Get rid of this. Ugh. Okay. Unplug, and then what I do, because I can't not show you how I do the whole thing, right? So, what I do, and I guess we'll just move it here. I need to wipe my hands. I'll put some gloves on for this part, actually. Okay. On goes the gloves. Oh, they're tight, man, I'm telling you. I'll probably end up putting another hole in them. I need mediums. Okay. Now what I do is I got my gigantic piping bag right here with a, a big tip with a star. Nothing fancy because there's, there's salt in this. And I've had it before. I've used the one that curved in and the salts kept getting stuck. Another good reason why you use fine salts. And you guys can just scoop this in a bowl. You don't have to do this. I just find that it looks nicer. Um, I find it looks nicer in the containers, okay? So basically... Oh, oh yeah, that's nice. That's so nice. Come on. Big and fluff. Look at it. It's so fluffy. And you're not supposed to fill your bags to the top because it makes piping quite hard to do. And I can get one more in there. Yeah, we might as well fill it up. I got a whole fold over here. And like I said, you guys maybe didn't notice, but it totally uh, doubled in size. Almost tripled, actually. Okay, now we'll move this out of the way so that you guys can see. I'll squeeze it down to the end of my piping nozzle. Yeah, I probably did fill it up just a wee bit too much. Test it. Oh, it comes out perfect. Okay, now normally I do this size. This is a custom order, so I'm going to do one big one for her. But basically, you guys are going to flip over again. Can you see now? Basically, what I do, squeeze them in. And like I said, it all depends. Sometimes you'll get the odd salt that'll stick. Don't panic. And yes, it's going to flatten when I do this a little bit. Don't fill it up too much. Because I take... Gigantic Himalayan salts, and I just decorate the top. And that is virtually it. It's easy peasy peasy peasy. See? Start in your little bowl, do a little squish. I always do a squish in the middle. It's just like when I try to pop pipe pup pipe cupcakes. And then I go around, and I just... That one 
might be a little too high. But that's it. That's all you're doing. And see, this normally, if you didn't fluff it up, you wouldn't be getting this many, um... You wouldn't be getting this many salts. Okay, guys, I have way too many now. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have a sale in Etsy. No, I'm definitely putting these on the site. I had them on before, and I only have one left of the last batch. So, or one or two, I don't know. So I was due for new ones. So, and since you guys all voted on the body buff, the only part that I didn't show you was obviously cooking the base. But like I said, um, you could use the store-bought. Store-bought takes a little bit longer to whip up than this does because it's, like I said, it's thicker. Um, but you guys don't have to do salts with this. You can do sugar. You can do, like I said, poppy seeds, ho ho beads, um, you know, whatever you guys want to use in a nice exfoliating scrub. I don't like this to be super harsh because, um, a couple of reasons actually. I find if you use certain amounts of salts or certain types of salts or too much salts, you, uh, You don't really get the the soapy, like, as bubbly and as soapy as you would like for a whipped soap. But I have found that this is, like, just the right amount um, that you... No, oh, I thought I blobbed. That you still get, like, the soap texture, right? So you're still going to get... Um, it's still gonna it's still gonna lather. It's gonna exfoliate, but like a nice gentle exfoliating. So it's I don't know, I just find it's the perfect combination. Any more salt than that, like I said, it'll still work. You just won't have the creaminess of it. But anyways, this recipe, if you did not want to use it as a scrub, I will give you a couple of other little um, pointers if you guys like. I have, um, I actually make this into a, well, I can't give you the full recipe, but I actually make, it starts with the foaming bath whip base, either bought or handmade, and then there's certain oils and stuff you can add to it, and I make a complete head-to-toe body, um, wash, and I gotta tell you, a couple oils that are amazing in this stuff is Babasu oil, and I love the Manoli Tahiti oil. The actual, it's like, it's expensive, so it's not something that you guys want to make all the time, but I think for a nice, kind of like a, you know, like a spoil me type product, I think it would be great. So anyways, isn't that easy? That's easy. And like I said, I had, this bowl held, I guess half a cup of salts. I have a tiny bit left, maybe... Maybe a tablespoon and a half left. Um, yeah, this is all. I used all that. And like I said, you guys saw how much mica I put in there? It's not super dark. It's a really nice pastel. The smell, oh, the smell is to die for. So, you can change it up any scent you want. You can put any color you want in it. It's totally, totally up to you guys. Like, it's so customizable. You want to do a party birthday cake one would look great with different colored, um, those different color jojoba beads. You know, like, there's so many things. The only thing is you gotta watch if you don't want to put candy sprinkles in here. They tend to bleed. Um, I have made this before, um, with a, uh, a bath soap in it. Or you could put a bath melt or whatever, however they're going to use it. Just a little soap is cool. Yep, you can use it in the shower, you can use it in the bath. I actually use it before I shave my legs. And after, but you don't really need it to after. It's so such a gentle exfoliant that... You know how they say it's always good to kind of exfoliate your skin or your legs before you shave because it makes the hairs all stand up? And it just, it just gets rid of all the dead skin so you're not shaving and cutting your legs and stuff. It's great for that. If you... I mean, my son uses it on his beard. Um, I make a version with him without all the extra salts. Just a little bit of salt, a dendric, and he 
I mean, we all use this. I've washed my hair with this. It's just kind of a pain sometimes to get the salt out of your hair, but it's good to be in salt every now and then. And I really, really, really like the, the properties of the dendro... The, I can't say it. Dendroidic salt. So get the app. Mama, get the app. It's free. Or watch me on YouTube. You don't need to watch me on here. I just can't see a talk. That's the sucky part. But anyways. Okay. Do I prefer apricot or sweet almond oil? Apricot is my number one favorite oil. Second would be avocado. And then I would go to macadamia nut. And it would be the sweet almond. Um, anything after below that. But apricot is my favorite. I mean, I have a four liter jug of it. And I have a four liter jug of my avocado, which I absolutely love. I do two different kinds of bombs. I usually do avocado in the one, and that would be anything that has salts and stuff in it, and then my apricot goes in my bling, and then it's a variation of other ones depending on what I'm making. Fractionated gets used quite a bit sometimes too, in like a butter bomb or a normal bomb, so. Yeah, no, it's not a lotion. It's like a whipped... The only way to describe it, it's a whip soap salt scrub. But you can change it to a sugar scrub. You can do it without the salts if you just want the whipped amazing soap. I love this stuff. Like, I, I made a version, too, for my husband for shaving. There's so many things you can do with the foaming bath whip. It's not even... I mean, just turn the switch on and you can think of a, a gazillion... A gazillion different things you can use, so... No, it's not a lotion. It's a whipped soap. I know some places call it a foaming bath butter. And it still is. When you hear the word foaming, that is a frothy, soapy substance. If it was just a whipped butter butter, then that's just a whipped butter lotion. This is a whipped foaming, FBW, foaming bath whip. Foaming is the soaping part. You could say foaming bath butter if you didn't have all the other stuff in there and because there's so many oils and that that's the beauty of this stuff is it can absorb and take almost i think it's half its amount of weight in oils so i could have completely done a half like half and half of oil if it sits too long it will start separating but i mean it's good i've had my other stuff for over a year and it's just starting to I mean, the oil's starting to go up the sides, but not nothing that you see separation or anything. But if you don't overload it, it'll stay in there fine. It can hold a lot of oil. That's the beautiful thing about this stuff. You can add a ton of oil, and it doesn't lose its foaming, frothing bubbleness. And I wish I could come over here. Maybe, I was going to say, maybe I can come over here with a bucket and just show you. You guys want to see how foamy it is, if I can do that? I don't know if there's enough. Yeah, I got to squeeze some out of the thing. I'm going to get a bucket of water and show you guys, okay? If I can. Oh, yeah, I can. I got this. Okay, just give me one sec. And then I have to pipe more, but that's okay. Give me a second, guys. Cold water doesn't freaking help either. Because I have hardly any hot water. So bear with me on the cold water aspect. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Bear with me. Bear with me on the cold water. Everybody knows soap. I mean, you can wash in cold water. You can wash in hot water because it's not the same as a bath bomb. But just to show you guys. Okay. I don't know if you can see this or not. My hands. Oh, look at the gloves stain me. So I will take some. I can't squeeze it out. Ah, it's hard with one hand. Okay. You guys saw me do this in the bath, but this is the stuff. It's so creamy. It's got. I can. You can. You could feel the grit, but it's so minute. So, like for shaving your legs, if it didn't have the grit. You would actually use this as the shaving cream. Does that make sense? But the fact that there's water in, or, you know, salts and stuff, now it's an exfoliant. But if you guys can see this, you get the most amazing. See the lather? Can you guys see it coming now? It's like a creamy, 
um, on your skin. Oh my god, I wish I'd done argon in all of them. Your skin is like, oh my god. And the smell will stick, but it's a nice smell. But can you guys see the lather on this? See what I mean? It's like a creamy lather. It's not like those really bubbly, bubbly soaps you get like from coconut oil. Mind you, if I'd used fractionated coconut, um, that could have changed the bubble factor. But normally, not too much because the foaming bath whip is what it is, right? It's the way it's made. Because you don't really do that when you make it. But I love it. Like right now, my hands feel like I have... My hands feel like I just soaked my hands in a pile of body butter. Like that's how soft it is. And if you guys can see the bubbles in the... Can you see the bubbles in the thing? So if you guys are in a bath, it's almost like an instant bubble bath as well. So... Yeah. So there you go. Isn't that neat? And there you go. You can get more lather if you wanted to. But it feels amazing. Like it really does. But now I have to go rinse my hands with water. Because this is all soapy. But isn't that cool? I mean you could literally have a bubble bath. After you shave your legs or wash. Or you know. Or in the shower. I mean it's good for the shower too. That's why I, that's why I made it. And the kids will use it. Because it's the shower. They don't bathe too much. Only Liam bathes. So hang on. I have to go rinse now. Slippery hands. Don't you dare drop this. Can you see the bubble factor now? Isn't that cool? Ah. Ah. Hey. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so I had a rinse. And that was cold water, don't forget, too. Warmer water, it would probably bubble a little bit better. So I gotta find some more jugs, or more jugs. I guess I have to get some more containers ready, because I'm gonna have probably... I got one for sale, one, two, three, four, I bet you I'm gonna have five foaming bath whips left. Why wouldn't it sell for you? I guess it's the way we have to market it. It's funny, I had mine in the shop for a good six months, and it I got a lot of likes, but no one really bought it. But you know what it is? I don't think that there's a lot of people that are actually aware of, like, what a foaming bath whip is. So maybe if we called it, like, a foaming salt scrub or something? I mean, I call it a body buff. People are like, what the hell is a body buff? Like, what is it? Are you, like, it just, it's, I don't know. I didn't want to say salt scrub or sugar scrub because it's... Everybody has a sugar scrub. It's just different. Plus, I don't find you get the same skin feel if you use, like, say, a salt scrub. To me, like, some salt scrubs are really either oily or you feel kind of dried out. This, to me, just feels like I just washed with lotion. That is the only way to like, explain it, but it doesn't leave you greasy. Like, right now, my hands are, like, softer than a bum. Baby bum. I love this stuff. And I'm not trying to push my stuff. I'm saying, foaming bath whip in general is, like... I love it. I absolutely love that as a product. Yeah, I, I my my sugar scrubs and salt scrubs don't do all that much either. I did find though at a live show, like if you went to a market and people actually stop and can actually talk to you and ask about stuff, it would go then. But I think as far as like just putting it out there on Etsy on a picture, it just it leaves. You know, there's so many out there that it just leaves. The imagination doesn't do anything, so you're going to have to do something to, like, wow them. To bring them in and say, whoa, why is this better than anybody else's sugar scrubs? And it's so hard to do. The only way they would know is if they tried it once, and then, of course, they'd like it and come back, right? So. I've done a few markets. I tell you, it's a lot of work for a whole day or for a two-day job. <laughs> so. Yeah, I said the last one I did, I didn't think I was going to do it again, because it was only a four-hour a four hour show, and uh, it was okay, but I got a lot of advertising, if nothing else. So that's good, it gets the name out there. Yeah, it takes weeks to prepare, I know, weeks, months, especially if you have to make soaps and stuff, so. I know, oh, excuse me, I know the last show, like, I was starting, I think the show was in April, and I started, like, 
I don't know, late October. I missed the October show. So I was okay. I was preparing for the October show, and then I missed it. Which was kind of good, because then I figured I'd have to make a whole bunch more stuff for the other show. But I just used what I had and then made a whole bunch more. But yeah, it takes a long time. Especially if, like I said, you're curing soaps, and then you got to do the labels. You gotta, Then you have to imagine in your brain how your table's going to set up. And then usually what happens at the show is they throw you and give you either two small tables or the wrong size, and it totally screws everything up. That's what happened to me anyways. <laughs> yeah. If you're working a full-time job, that would be very hard to time to fit it in plus family life, eh? Well, what you do if you're only doing good at the markets as good as get your cards with you and push the push the Etsy. But there's a lot of people that still like the face-to-face. -face, so, I know it's a tough market. You you kind of get one or the other. But it would be nice to get one with the other. But it doesn't always work that way. But yeah, take the market. Take the um, advantage of the markets. And and use that as an opportunity to hand out cards. To get your name out, you know. Um, the big thing I found at one of my shows was I actually had a... Um, I always have business cards. But I had a big basket. And I had samples in all my cards. Each one had a bag. So it wasn't just a piece of soap. I had like a mini bath bomb. I had a mini soap. I had Each bag had some different sort of a sample in it. Um, and I just told them, you know, what's your favorite thing? Do you like bubble bath? Do you like this? Whatever. And they would take... Well, most of them would take that one card with whatever sample. But I did catch a couple people pocketing like four or five because they wanted all the samples. So... The next time, we had to put a bin out and say samples, but it was not free. It was a dollar. Everybody had to, if you wanted it, it was a dollar. So, it sucks that people do that. It just really kind of ruins it for everybody. Do I supply any stores? What? Stores like local shop that will sell your stuff? I used to. I used to have all my stuff in a local flower shop down the street. Um... Did pretty good around Christmas time, Valentine's Day, that sort of thing. But then, um, we're in a really teeny tiny town, right? And we had, like, major construction, well, major construction for our town. We got a street light put in. But the whole center of town intersection was just jammed, and it was construction paper people, and everything was rerouted. So her store didn't get a lot of traffic. Um, the only people that actually came in were like the quilting club people who they wanted to do or I guess they were asked to make gift baskets for something so they would come in and buy like all my bath bombs and all my soaps to actually use inside gift baskets so she we ended up talking and she just says just not enough traffic and it's not worth it because she wasn't selling stuff and then having my spot you know that extra income place that she could have used for her stuff so we just we canned it I was there for a couple years so but it's good, and I got a lot of, like I said, a lot of advertising out that way. So, anyways, guys, easy peasy. Is there any questions about it? Any questions about the, the recipe or anything you guys need to know? Anything? Hmm. We all good? Okay, because I have to, uh... I'm gonna have to get... Some more containers ready to go. And I think these are going to touch. Yeah, that's the problem. Sometimes they touch, but a little bit is okay. That's kind of why the salts are there. It kind of protects them from being smushed. So, anyways, guess what? Now we have Foaming Bath Whip Whipped Salt Scrub on sale, or will be on sale on Etsy. <laughs> so, I can't do the body butter. I thought of doing the body butter for you guys once, but it's such a pain. Because of the amount of time that you have to let it cool in between. And the fact that I'm live. But I may do lip balms for you guys. Or my lip butters, okay? I got them ready. Like a few of those ready to go. Maybe the plumpers or something akin to that. But anyways, guys. Will what affect texture? Oh, sorry, there's a question. I ship my bath bombs everywhere, hon. Believe it or not... Uh, most of my, like, most of the orders come from the United States. I have had a couple in the UK. Um, a few in Canada, but mostly it goes U.S. And speaking of, I just want to have a little, just, my teeny tiny rant for this moment. Teeny, teeny, teeny tiny rant. You guys already know that I had the big rant about the thumbs up, thumbs down. I discovered something. And this is all I'm going to say. Uh... 
there was a video. I believe it was February 17th. I'm not sure exactly, but it had a couple thumbs down. Just for the record, and I'm just putting this out there, I can tell who thumbs down now. Okay? I know for a fact that one of them was a subscriber from the UK who is no longer subscribed. Maybe they still watch. Another one from the US. So if you decide to give me thumbs down, people, I know who you are. I'm not going to go thumb down your channel, even though I know I, you know, that's baby miss, whatever. But if you guys want to keep thumbing me down, by all means, go ahead. Because I know what it looks like, or it makes how it makes you look. And it's okay, because between you and I, I know who it is. Alright? So... Anyways, on that note, guys, I just had to say that because I now know how to check who dislikes my videos. But anyway, <laughs> I just had to put that out there. <clears throat> Don't like it? Move on. Act your age. Okay, guys, anyhow, I'm sorry. I had to put that out. Done. So I'm going to go uh, package up the rest of these. This is for my wonderful friend on Etsy. She got a big one. She's been waiting patiently, so she gets her big one with her fragrance. And look, it's not touching. Isn't that perfect? Anyways, guys, on that note, I'm off. I'm going to finish packaging these up. And then I'm going to have to make labels, and we're good to go. So thanks for joining me. Um, uh, another quick note. I didn't tell you guys, or did I? You know how I did my dream bombs? I just have to show you guys this one real quick one. I'm sorry, again, as I do this. Um, you guys know that I did in my dreams bombs. Okay, here they are. This is a new one, okay? Still the same fragrance, same everything. This is now a pendant bomb. It's I Love You to the Moon and Back, okay? It's part of the Bling Bomb line. So now we have... I have four or five. One, two, three, four. I have four pendant pendant bombs ready to go. All right? Just putting that out there. So now we have this. These are two. Still the dream line, but these all love you to the moon and back. Just thought I'd share, okay? And then I have the charm bombs up there too, but those four are sold. But they're happening now, so if anybody is interested in the bling bombs... Any of them, as far as pendants, charms, rings, whatever, or even little princess ones. I do ones for little girls with the cheaper rings, so you don't have to worry about them losing their rings. Just putting that out there. Oh, God. Harvest Moon, it smells so good. Anyways, I just thought I'd share that with you guys. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this. If you guys have any questions regarding this, just shoot me a message in the comments. Remember to like, subscribe if you want to. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, guys.